here's the airplane. It's a, um, I believe it's a five and a half meter um, Arcus that's been repaired. The last time this thing flew, unfortunately, um, pretty windy day and it did a cartwheel landing and did severe damage to the fuse as well as to the wing tip, which it did the cartwheel on. So overall, the paint job is, it's okay. Um, I mean, some people might leave it, but you can definitely see it's been painted rather than it looks like glass. You can actually make a paint job look completely as um, glass. It's just a matter of sanding and polishing it. So um, in general, you don't want to get too much paint uh, on these as uh, the paint it has weight. So the more paint you put on it, the more weight you end up having to fly around with. Um, and uh, the idea is, of course, you want to keep your gliders light. So sand down as much of it as you can um, without getting in past the paint, uh, leaving some for the final stages of the fine polishing. Polishing is really a step. You start out with uh, really rough stuff. You start out with a 400 grit wet sand and uh, you wet sand everything, get all the imperfections out and you dry it uh, with a paper towel or whatever. So you can see if you get like the orange peel effect out of the painting job. Um, once you have it, so it's all matte. So basically you have a smooth surface. Um, then you will sand it down with a 600. Uh, which is again really to remove more of that fine fine stuff uh, you really what you're doing is you're removing some of the uh, gouge marks that the 400 grit sandpaper makes um, after sanding with 600 um, I jump up to a thousand um, again you're wet sanding the whole time and uh, with the thousand um, I kind of use a foam block a flexible foam block um, and then from the 1000 I move up to 1500. Uh, you have to be careful with uh, the corners and edges of things. Uh, you have a tendency to put too much pressure on there and you can end up going right through the paint on those areas. So you have to be careful. After the 1500, uh, it's up to 2000 and from 2000 to 2500 and from 2500 up to 3000. Um, I think the last I have is 3000. Once you have sanded the whole airplane with 3000 uh, grit sandpaper, um, you are, the, the, if you dry it and look at it, actually it has a bit of a sheen to it. You could almost let it be as is. Um, it'll kind of have a dull effect, uh, shine. Um, but you can actually take some rubbing compound after that. And you could be either buff it by hand. Um, I buff it with a little polisher. Um, there is some, uh, polishes on the market both cordless as well as corded uh, that work with like a five or six inch pad um, dual action is kind of what I prefer um, I don't want it just spinning around I'd like to actually do a, like orbital type sanding with it um, and again um, that you're using a um, polishing compound which is like a paste that you put onto the pads and um, there are different ones there I'll try and go with those later anyway We'll move on okay um i'm gonna start out with uh actually the 600 um on the uh, wingtip because um, there's not very much texture on it and um, the new 600 sandpaper will actually cut fairly fast so i'm gonna start with that and i'm gonna use a block and um this is actually a hard block um, it's acrylic, it's a three eighths inch thick acrylic. Um, and uh, that way I can keep the form. What I wanna do is basically, I want the sandpaper to cut down all the uh, high spots. forth little circular motions if I was trying to reshape it I would do cross sections like this but I'm not really going to reshape it I'm really just going to get down the uh, the uh, high points that the uh, sometimes painting will do and again be careful around the ends and edges because it will take that pretty quickly and make sure you keep the sandpaper wet
and clean off the bottom of the sandpaper. Make sure there's no high points, like right here, there's one starting. Scratch off the nail, no one starting right here. And then what you want to do is um, wipe it clean once in a while so you can see. First have a um, sponge in the water. I get most of it off with. And then paper towel. And I'm gonna pull the camera in so you can see what I'm looking at. So here's what I'm looking at. You see shiny and dull spots. That is the texture of the paint. And that's what you wanna get down to just being all dull. So I kind of have to keep going here. Um, you can see here in the aileron you can see the that it's um there it's pretty good i got a little bit right there so that basically that's what you want to get rid of You can see it's actually take it all paint. It's actually starting to look really good. I have just a few more areas and um, then I'm going to go on to uh, the 1000. So basically here, I have everything kind of in a dull finish. And um, there might be a few little shiny spots here and there, but um, they're gonna go away. Basically um, out of 1000, I'm, I'm gonna jump straight to the 1500. Um, it means I have to sand just a little bit longer, but it'll be fine. Again, you wanna make sure you do this uh, wet sanding. And this time I'm gonna to jump to a foam block. Where is my foam block? Okay, I basically use this uh, one inch packaging foam. Um, you basically get like your monitors and stuff like that and that. This uh, happened to be some that I got from some packaging and it's one inch thick, so I just cut blocks out of it. And here's my block. <clears throat> And this is very labor intensive, but um, it looks really nice when you're all done. And it makes, you get back to what the uh, fiberglass kit looked like um, as it was painted in the mold or painted after the mold. When some manufacturers will paint their airplanes after they have mold been, uh, molded, um, one way you can kind of tell is that on a fuse, if you have that seam that runs down through and you can see it, that means that it was probably painted um, in the mold and then put together afterwards. Where if the seam is gone, it typically means that they fabricated, they molded the part 
and then painting afterwards and they've gone through this process of basically sanding and polishing afterwards. If you look real careful, you can probably see it. There might be some very slight swirl marks here and there, or there might be some spots here and there where it's glossy and not quite so glossy as other areas. And that's basically areas where they didn't sand thoroughly or they didn't polish thoroughly. Anyway, I'm moving along here. So this was 1500. Here we are. So there's a little water here and there. Um, you can basically see the whole thing is kind of dull. And areas that I didn't get too well, if you can see the little glossy parts right there on the edge, those are areas that typically, um, you want to try and sand those down so they don't show. Because they will, they will show at the end. So basically what I'm gonna do is just go back over those little glossy areas and um, be careful not to take too much off. Get it there at the edges. And you can actually see on my rag, if you can see the little white, that's the actual paint that it has removed. So you know that the sandpaper is working. Here's 2000, again, it's a wet dry, and you always wanna do this wet. I can't imagine that you'd be able to be successful if you do it with um, dry. Um, basically, you need the water to lubricate and cool while it's cutting, and um, that's kind of the whole trick. And again, really what you're doing now is you're just removing the microscopic scratches that the uh, 2000 sandpaper, I mean the uh, 1500 sandpaper left, if you can believe that. It does actually score or create little scratches in the paint. And that's basically what sandpaper does, is it just keeps removing material at a finer and finer level. So that was 1500, here we're doing 2000. Okay, it's kind of totally matte now. There's a few spots right there, but I'm not really going to worry too much about those. But you kind of see here, there's a little bit of a shine to it. Um, actually, right now, it kind of looks like, um, like an old wing that's been neglected and cleaning and has been wiped clean, and it kind of leaves those fine scratches that dirt sometimes will do when you... Uh, wipe it clean and there's dirt on it like especially like black paints you'll you'll see it okay next up 2500 and the one after that is going to be the uh, 3000 and then we're done well then we go to the polishing and you don't need to do too much sanding here because the scratches that the um, uh, 2000 did or 2500 is uh, not that much. 
I'm sorry, the 2000 did is not that much. They're real, real fine. And at this point, it's really not removing much paint at all. As a matter of fact, it almost feels like you're not doing anything, but it is. And if you don't do these steps and you don't do the proper sanding in between, um, when you go to polish, all of a sudden you'll get to an area that won't polish out. And that's because the sanding wasn't done right. Again, you can see paint. Okay, that was a 2500 and you can see the shine has improved but it's still still kind of scratchy okay last step is the 3000 and again make sure you're doing it wet and this is where it starts to change really rapidly <laughs> I like this part and again it doesn't feel like the sandpaper is doing anything it feels like you just rubbing wet wax paper on top of a surface doesn't really feel like it's doing anything you can't feel it sanding but it is you can kind of see there is a very fine film and that's that's all it's taken off Right, it, is, it isn't much that it takes off, but it takes off a little bit. And I'm um, not even sure we can be able to see it here. Oh yeah, I can. It's a very fine, that's it. Now watch when I dry this off. So here, that was the 3000, and I don't know if you can tell, but now it looks much better. You can actually start to see a reflection, looking straight down on it. Um, it would do better if there was more light, but um, yeah, next. We have the wing which is over here we're gonna push it over here in a sec um i put up a barrier because when you start to polish um it starts throwing that compound everywhere because remember that pad is spinning around um i have a couple different polishers one this one here is for like fine detail uh really small parts um and this one here is for a little bit bigger parts i actually have a much bigger one as well which is this one down here, but that one is more for a car. Um, when I start using that big one on a wing, <laughs> the wing starts to take off. It starts to fly because it, it, it's big and it grabs. Anyway, this here, um, these pads are good. So they come with different pads. Um, the yellow is uh, a pad typically that's used, it's a foam pad. It's typically used for like removing oxidation off of cars. Again, these are all designed for automotive industry. Um, so it's a kind of a rough cutting pad. The orange one here is, uh, you could use, it's for polishing. Um, you could actually use that, that would be just fine. The foam is the actual, the black one is actually the one that's designed for finish work to give it that high luster. So I'm probably gonna go with the orange one here cause I wanted to cut a little bit. And again, I'm, I'm not gonna make this wing shine more than the other wings, so. Um, it'll be good. Oh, and I forgot. Here's the uh, polish compound. It's kind of like a paste. Um, I'm going to put that onto 
um, the pad. <sighs> Uh, I think I need to go to two hands here. That will be plenty. And I'm going to basically rub that out on the wing. Okay, here we go. I'll take that one dry spot off. And switch around a little bit on the pad. And get some on the wing. And I'm going to have to hold on to this wing as I go. Okay, I'm going to now wipe it with a rag. I use these uh, microfiber rags. This is wipe the clean. And you can kind of give it a little bit of buff at the same time as you do this. And wow. I think it's there. It's worthwhile getting the polisher for the buffer. Um, it saves a lot of elbow grease. I've got a little bit. I need more here. good I think what I'll do is um, put it back on the a uh, little bit more here than tip where you're at you can't see it but um, this is looking really good this is looking like fiberglass once again I will move the camera so you can see I think the best thing was here we go it is called a high shine now